Hello, my name is Sherry Austin. Here's another disruptive idea for you. We need 100 million people in Canada by 2100. Yes, I said it. <laughs> in other words, we need to be roughly three times our current size, 82 years from now. That may sound a bit shocking, but let me share a few facts. Today we have 37 million Canadians. If we stay on our current course, we'll have 55 million in 2100. Not nearly enough to ensure a thriving economy or to afford a compa our compassionate social programs or build the infrastructure we need for livable communities or to maintain our level of influence in the world as a trade partner and a champion of human rights and peace. The key issue is that our society is, is aging. We're both living longer and having fewer children, not a great combination. You can see for yourselves the trajectory of the past 56 years. Longevity is in blue and fertility is in purple. The gap will continue to widen. Of course, Canada is not alone in this challenge. Japan is an extreme example of an aging society, about 15 years ahead of us in this and quite possibly at a point of no return. Here you can see their dilemma expressed in sales of baby diapers versus adult diapers. <laughs> 2015 was a turning point in Canada. For the first time ever, we had more people over 65 than under 15. And the trend is accelerating. Today, seniors are 17% of the population. In 2031, they'll be 25%. That people are living longer is, of course, good news. But on the flip side, older people are typically not working and are costly in terms of health care, home care, and income security programs. Combine that with the fact that we have a very low fertility rate. Canadian women now have an average of just 1.5 children each, much lower than the replacement level of 2.1, and that's not likely to rise anytime soon. Definitely not in my household, anyway. The point is that fewer and fewer working people are supporting more older people. In the 70s, there were six working people for every older person. Today, it's four. And in 2036, the ratio will be two to one. That means a smaller tax base just when costs are increasing. We simply won't have the people to run the economic engine that supports us all. So size does matter. At 50 million people in 2100, our annual GDP rate will be less than 1.6%. With 100 million people, it will be a healthier 2.6. So if we don't set our sights on serious growth, taxes are going to have to rise, or programs will have to be cut, or both. But before we all throw up our hands in despair, there is a fairly obvious solution. We need more immigration. Yes, there are some other things that might help. We could double down on fertility, but even if that works, it will take at least 20 years for those kids to reach the workforce, or many, many more in the case of my kids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we could try harder to lure some of the 3 million Canadians home who are living abroad. We could re increase the retirement age. But these options won't get us where we need to go. Immigration will. And be believe it or not, we've grown at this pace before in less time. Between 1945 and now, 73 years, we went from a population of 12 to 37 million. So maybe aiming at 100 million in 2100 isn't that disruptive. To be clear, we're not talking about bringing millions of people a year. Raising the annual immigration target to 450,000 from today's 310,000 may well do the trick if we start soon. We are already among the best in the world at sourcing immigrants, using the point system to target economic immigrants with the skills we need. But we can be bolder on the numbers. International students, for example, are some of the most ideal new Canadians. And with the US and Britain now uh, clamping down on students wanting to stay, we have a great opportunity. And let's remember that our immigrant story is a really positive one. Immigrants to this country are better educated, start more businesses, commit fewer crimes, and are healthier than uh, Canadian-born residents. That said, there will be real challenges ahead. We'll need to get better at supporting settlement 
encouraging immigrants to go where they're most needed, qualifying their skills more quickly, and removing barriers to success. Governments will need to make smart policy decisions and investment choices in areas like infrastructure, education, employment, and early childhood support, and we'll need to protect and strengthen our culture of pluralism. At the same time, we must ensure that Indigenous people take their rightful place in our growing economy and that our growth is environmentally sustainable. But these are challenges we need to face up to whether we're 55 or 100 million. All of this will take government commitment and community level work, but maybe the place to start is with personal reflection. My family's story has shaped my view of the country, as I'm sure yours has. My grandparents, poor Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe, found a place for themselves here in Calgary. They did what many did then and now, they opened a small business. In this case, the North Star Grocery on 2nd Avenue Northwest. You may know it today as the Vendôme Cafe. The family built a life here, although not without difficulty. My father and two sisters grew up in the back of the store. Their mother died of breast cancer. Their father had an industrial accident and was in the hospital for more than a year. But my father grew up to be a lawyer and ultimately a senator and the most optimistic person I know. His sisters went into nursing and civil service. The next generation became business owners, lawyers, teachers, journalists, healthcare workers, and architects. That's my family. Give or, few, give or take a few details, it may also be your family. Hard work, optimism brings rewards. If not for you, at least for your children or theirs. What if our relatives had stayed where they were and not bet on the future? How much more difficult would our lives be and how much less would Canada be? I'm proud to be part of an organization, the Century Initiative, that's focused on a bigger and bolder future for Canada. We're committed to building out the fact base, encouraging the conversation, and coming up with concrete ideas for action. We're hoping that others will join in taking the long view and steering Canada to a prosperous 2100. By, we don't by any means have all the answers, but we do know we need to get started. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Margaret Atwood, a great friend of the walrus. There is an infinite number of possible futures. Which one will actually become the future will depend on how we behave right now. Thank you. <laughs>